Hey, it's Carrie here. Just about to depart from Washington, D.C. to Kathmandu via Abu Dhabi. And I thought I'd show you what's going in my pack. This is my pack right here. It's a Gregory Zulu 40. And I'm bringing this little package. It's a Home Docs 30 liter sort of day kit, which falls into this pocket. Uh, in terms of gear, I've got a little bag here for electronics. I've got some extra batteries, flashlight, converter for European plug, headlamp, shaver charger, monopod for this particular camera, external charging battery, global converter, something that goes from one to three so I can plug in multiple things at a time, charger for the external battery pack, Olympus Tough camera, a bag for the camera that I've got, a tiny Sony action camera, <coughs> a few toys for kids, squeaker, which I'll put in my backpack and use it for various humorous interludes on the trip. Bit of food, beef jerky trail mix, gels, Steri pen and water filter, a passport sack, waterproof bag, bandana, some gels and bars, sunblock, diaper rash for any particular chafing, puffy down jacket, underwear bag, socks, hat, and a bandana, high-vis hat, trekking poles, which I think I'll probably bring, but I'm still kind of debating, one sleeping mat, a zero-degree bag, one set of flip-flops, one set of mittens, a few short-sleeve shirts, one long-sleeve shirt, four long-sleeve uh, technical shirts, a pair of long johns, a couple pairs of pants, a rain jacket, a good rain jacket, a pair of gaiters, my ultras, which are probably the only shoes I have, set of glasses in case I need them. I've got sunglasses as well. A couple fleeces, a towel, and some toys for kids that should be sort of fun if I find anything. That's pretty much what I'm going to pack. So, heading to the airport soon. I'm not kind of fully aware of how this video will pan out, but going to the Himalayas, going to try and get to Everest Base Camp, have some friends joining. Should be a blast. Just taking off mountain. This is the downhill runway. It's seriously downhill. And it just drops off the mountain. He is not taking off. He is dropping off. Look at that. So we are going to be on the trail very shortly after I finish my vegetable omelet. Here we are. These are the cast of characters. Alec Weissman, Mari Saletto, Tom Saletto's runway. We're literally just starting our Everest Base Camp trek. We're all loaded up. Our packs are actually remarkably light. Yours is like, with water, it's probably 22, 24 pounds. 20 pounds. Hers probably 21, 22. 20, 21. 47 pounds. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in Luke. 
Dukla and we are heading up. We're going to try and get to Namche Bazaar today. It's about nine miles. A lot of down, crossing back and forward over rivers. And then from there, we head up this way. And our last stop will hopefully be Everest Base Camp there. So that's our plan of action. Namche, 10 hours walk. That's about right for sure. Getting some Dimox just in case. Look, I think just in case. Yeah, go ahead. I'm taking it no matter what. Okay. We are heading out. There's all the locations. First stop at the tourist police, checking our passports. But there are amazing loads that people carry. Little dude probably carrying 50, 100 pounds worth of stuff. Wow. That is a prayer wheel. These are all prayer wheels. You turn them, and that is the same as doing a prayer. And this is a monster prayer wheel. You can turn it. Ooh. Doing a super big prayer for a safe trip, an enjoyable trip. There we go. It's a pretty amazing place. Mari, you should go see the prayer wheel in there. When will you come back? Uh, Namche, looks 40 like minutes in. From here. 40 minutes in and continuing down this path. Howdy, howdy. There's a bunch of little houses and tea houses. They have these rocks that have been carved and painted. So it's not just. Whoa. Uh, yeah. The human Sherpas and then the animal Sherpas too. Here they come. Gotta have cooking gas. Just coming around the corner here. We picked up a dog who's hanging out with us there. We're still figuring out a name for him. I think we should name him Bear. Bear? Yeah. I was thinking Oso because I have a friend who's a dog named Oso. It's a little bit like a bear, but this is our stellar view. Oh my More carved rocks. Oh. Nice and easy. <laughs> this reminds me of... Oh, come on, dog. What you doing? Come on, let's go, buddy. You get a little bounce going? We'll get the double bounce going. <laughs> Holy mackerel, it is a chasm looking straight down. This is a trip. This is rad. It does move around a little too. What do you think? Hello, namaste. We got prayer flags. There's a good bounce. It's sort of there, but you could you could slide a foot through there pretty easily, especially if it's wet. Yeah. Hold on tight. Hello, hello. <laughs> Mari's doing some bouncing of her own. Corner. Jaw dropping. And up there, just staggering mountains. We got a crew of yaks here coming through. As we are heading back, it's, it's a very civilized trail. There's actually, there's actually more or less, not paved, but placed stones everywhere, stairs everywhere. These are some of the porter packs that probably super, super heavy. They got their bells. We got our whistles. 
things that you don't see in the Rockies. We did have a moose. Yeah, we lost our moose. Our dog. Nah, moose day. That was our joke. And he didn't. He left. It's kind of surreal. Seeing the... We're looking straight up. It is interesting everywhere that we're walking, taking a look at. A little bit of maintenance being done. Wow. Prayer flags, carvings. That is a big, big rock to be carved like that. Whew. This is very different. Altitude is... Keeps you on your toes, a little bit more out of breath. Carrying a pack is changing the up and down. Light pack, running packs, much easier to deal with. But I guess it would be a little tougher to do with this particular trek. We got nine miles today. We are just coming to a rather impressive structure. One of the things to note around here is that there are no roads whatsoever in. So if you build something, it either came in on helicopter, yak, human. And look at this place. It's either a guest house or a monastery. Yeah, they grow food. Looking through Fakding which is well, close to halfway where we're going. Namche Bazaar, we figure, hello, 19 kilometers, so somewhere around 11 miles. And there are tons of little guest houses and tea houses and reggae bar, garlic. Chickens. Chickens. But now, we're going to get the fuck thing out of here. We're on... Whoop. We're on another awesome bridge over this big... <laughs> oh, how nice, look at that. Right in my shoes, my ultras. When you pass people, you gotta kind of walk it. Here it is. Are you guys going in down there, way back? That's a yes. A little early for it, but on the way back, that'll feel nice. Then we know we only got a couple hours before we get back to Lukla. That's the thing. That's almost the thing that gets me more than anything. This is an awesome little bridge. Oh, check out the waterfall. That is gorgeous. And I love this rickety, rickety bridge. Might have to go and check that out, huh? getting to be quite steep and sustained heading up this valley ooh look at that that is spectacular wow we're doing a two high Because of this, the pony through the Pony Express on this amazing river. Oh, we got one load. There 
here he comes. <laughs> Things you don't get normally. Keep massive rickety suspension bridge and a mule train passing through. Manjo, which is this little outpost here. And it's the first checkpoint for the Tim Star. Tim is the traveler information card. Carry which, Everest, oh, go ahead. Everest Base Camp. Yeah, you can say EBC, short. EBC. My backpack is actually broken. It's got this little squeak there. Every time I press it, I have to get it fixed. Hey, where's Bob? Yeah. We just had a lovely meal in a tea house. The Manju Guest House Tibetan Restaurant. And we are going to head back up. Apparently, this next section is straight up. A couple thousand feet of climbing, over three miles. Everybody. And we're at about 10,000 feet. So it'll be fun with these monster packs on our back. So we got that to look forward to. Just got our. Park Pass, which Alec is now going to go do as well. So, no, no passport. Uh, it's about $32, $33 to get a Park Pass, and your Tim's Pass was 2000 so 50 bucks gets you into Everest. Pretty good. Good news, bad news scenario. This is where the climb starts, but we're heading straight now. Looks like maybe we have to go. Our down course is amazing. Huge cliffs covered with carved lettering. I wish I knew what it all said, but if you look closely, it is actually carved out and then painted. It's pretty beautiful. As far as graffiti goes, I'll take this. Of our long up, up, up. We think it's all switchbacks and stairs that look like this. We've done a lot of work on the trail, unimaginable amount of work. Miles and miles of stairs and cut stone. But 10,000 plus feet. Whew. This section from Manjo to Namche Bazaar is a lot of up and down and technical trail. Generally up, we're following this amazing river which is descending quickly and we are on the embankment going up and down and switchbacking. Looks like two bridges over there. I wonder if we have to cross both, but it's just switchback after switchback, and the trail is loose rock intermingled with big rock and a lot of dust. And the dust is essentially, I think, mule and yak dung, a little horse manure as well, maybe. But this is our trail. Wow, look at that! Look at that. Yet another suspension bridge over a suspension bridge. And you can see this is just gorgeous. A pretty tremendous canyon. And if we look down, it's another bridge. guys with their bells. They're pretty sure-footed. Namaste. Namaste. Good work. Yeah. Handsome looking character. So special, so special being here. I love this, love it. Whew. I'm using a little bit of Wim Hof 
breathing method every now and then when I'm feeling out of breath. Wim Hof is the Iceman. He's got a book where he talks about his breathing method and it's supposed to help at altitude. You take in a breath, you partially exhale, and then try and bring in an even fuller breath and do that four or five times, and then a big exhale. And it seems to do it pretty well. I mean, I'm of course short of breath, but it's not so bad. Woo! We have actually the Red Bull helicopter flying back and forth. That could be it up there. <laughs> Sounds like they're got some athletes at base camp. And actually, in, another thing that just happened, Chilean Journey, with a J-O-R-N-E-T, a Spanish ultra runner and mountain climber, just completed his summits of my life two days back, trying to climb Everest in a speed ascent unassisted, no ropes, no oxygen. And uh, I don't think he set the speed. He said he had some stomach issues, which made him slow down. But he summited by himself about midnight, came back down. I had a few friends who were worried. They hadn't heard anything, so. Well, I'm quite pleased with that ascent. We've got a bunch of uh, people here. One more checkpoint, Ramche Bazaar. So we're having one more entry check, but I just set it in low gear. I just kept moving. There are a couple locals, kids, no, no backpacks, and I was very pleased to be able to beat them up. They were taking shortcuts on the way up, but they stopped and rested, which enabled me to get past. So, pleased with that. Now I'll wait for the others. We'll gather back up. We have regathered. We are heading up to Namche Bazaar. We're going to find a spot. Alec has found a friend there who's juicing up with a little bit of water for 20 bucks. He threw Mari's his not threw his. Mari, Mari is like, I'm going to a place where I can take my pack off and then I'm done. So, yeah. 20 bucks is worth it. 20 no bucks for Alec to, to have a friend, a porter up worth the hill. Worth it. He's behind us. A lot of places along the way that have water coming out, like this. I'm not sure I'd trust this. It's coming directly down from a town, but I might filter it and treat it if I was in a pinch. Yeah. But some of these guys just drink straight out of it. Local immunity. Good? Getting into, oh yeah, the town proper now. Look at this. <laughs> Neatly stacked wood, nicely painted terraced area. Wow. Goosebumps. Look at that. That's some precision stacking. Namche Bazaar. Most groups do that hike in two days or three really we started at what was it 8 30 and it's five right now so that's pretty legit effort a little better than the 10 hours they said no a lot better actually surprisingly yak cheese and every kinds of chocolate <laughs> Actually sounds good. You ready to go? We are just leaving the first guest house we stayed at, which is a lovely place with yak skulls and all kinds of decoration, which is pretty spectacular. And looking outside, we can see Namche Bazaar which is a fairly big outpost on the way. So, pretty for breakfast, dinner, water, shower, charging, internet, all that was 25 bucks. Pretty good deal. Money, man. 
Here's a we didn't. Alec <laughs> FaceTiming his, uh, his girlfriend back in California. But Can this is Mari and Tom. Take another whole cliff, cliff blocking up. Block. Eating some cliff blocks. But this is a view of Namche Bazaar. It just drops right off into that canyon straight ahead there, which is a river that we followed up. We anticipate fairly decent weather today for a while and probably eight hours on the on the feet with a okay, so 1500 feet of gain cool. so we'll probably be about 13 tonight I'm gonna go call from so it's a good acclimation <laughs> opportunity but straight up the stairs in the valley from this trail down there is just past Man, Man, Manjo and this trek up here is one that's a little bit notorious because it's steep and sustained but in terms of a place to go for a walk this is great i'm sort of missing my running kit so i could actually move but i heard there's a ultra marathon and a marathon from everest base camp that starts in a little while and i Probably the timing is not quite right for me, but if I find some solution, I may choose to do an event out of Everest and just run back down to Lukla straight to my plane. So, a bit of a long shot, but hard to complain. Checking out some of the flowers. These are just, they just live with living. They live incredibly with beautiful. Just a leaf that's kind of lightened up. Mari's been admiring it. It's warm out. It's like 70 five degrees maybe yeah it's warm it's beautiful right now and the trail is immaculate well kept this is big one or small one the big one all right let's see it it's really tough there's more light to this oh yeah this one's yeah. it's not too bad let me see Carrie. Are you good? There we go. yeah it's not, so, it's not as bad as i thought it might be really so this is how you go huh? uh, not too bad? No. <laughs> wow. All right, Tom, you're up. Yeah, you're just, it's two packs, right? So sometimes do you do three packs? Oh, sometimes three packs, yeah. Four packs? No, four packs. <laughs> sometimes we see people. Oh. Yeah. Crazy. Big. How many kilograms do you do? Uh, this one's not so good. Four feet. That one's four feet. 20. And then you do up to... Usually 20. <laughs> 25. Okay. Wow. That is wow. cool. Here we go. <laughs> this one's just this one's 20, Tom. So yeah, add another 100. Oh. Yeah. Just like this? Oh. Yeah, lean forward. There oh, you go. Let me see, baby. <laughs> What's your name? Lockfield. Lockfield? No. Pleasure oh. to meet you. Do you hold on to this? Do you oh. hold this? Sometimes. Like this? <laughs> oh my god. He is not good. This is sorry. This is a party foul. Your porter career is over. Uh, how's it go? Easy? The impressive thing about this hike is they've got recycling. Keep Kumbu clean all over the place. We're just aiming to go up this switchback trail up there and have lunch up there. That is Lotsi, Lotsi. Behind the clouds right there is Everest. So we are heading up, soldiering onward. Alec pulling it up. Mari in the rear for the moment. It's an incredible river down there as well. Such wild terrain. If you look around, you are just surrounded by all this stuff. <laughs> that is the spirit. Forest right now, heading right through, seeing other trackers coming the other way. Some of them look pretty spent. Some of them look pretty fresh though as well. I just got to believe our day and our weather right now is hard to beat. Can't imagine much better conditions. We are heading down. It's quite a long downhill to get in and there are a lot of porters coming different ways. 
Some of them are staggeringly incredible that they can carry. Look at this guy. I must say, good work. One, two, three, four. That is a lot of weight. How many kilos? 75. 75. He's carrying 180 pounds uphill. Very good. He's carrying way more than his body weight of this. And this is gnarly. That is incredible. Coming up to what might be our last suspension bridge in a while. And it heads across. And then we're following, I think, a valley the whole way down. So, exciting stuff. One more good bridge. Hello. Namaste. Namaste. The bounce across. Always a lot more wind here. Almost worth holding onto your hat, which I will maybe do. These prayer flags are getting a lot of mileage. Come across these prayer wheels that are spinning all by themselves in a stream. It's like a water mill. Oh, we're doing a tourist pass up here. Check post. Look at these things. The rhododendron forest. There are these beautiful pink rhododendron trees all over the place. And we're at, what are we at? Elevation, 11 and a half, 12 maybe? And in the, in the surrounding areas, you can see green all the way up. In the Rockies and around British Columbia, as soon as you get up around 10, 11, 12, it's pretty barren. But here, you've got a full ecosystem in this rhododendron forest. It's beautiful. 11,100. 11, uh, no, I've not seen another yak. He's up there. Here's a man who lost his yak. Yakety yak! He comes back. You got him now. Helicopters ferrying people up the easy way. Or gear. The brown one, yeah. Go, go! Such a beautiful spectacle. I think we're about halfway up, maybe. Maybe a little less. Mari, this is the checkpoint here. You can see mountains straight up there. Porter's coming down. We're close to Tengboche. We're getting close to Tengboche, a long uphill. Keeping everybody together this time. We're gonna have lunch up there. But here they come. Tom putting on game face. Mari. Slight smile. Slowly but surely making her way up. Alec probably catching up with email in the back somewhere. <laughs> I actually see him I him laying down on a rock. Yeah, it is. Come on, Alec, you got this! Tom and I have made it up to Teng Boche. It's an impressive building and architecture up here for being as far off as, oh my gosh, it feels weird to walk without my pack. Magical. Oh my word. We might have to go and check that out for sure. That was definitely not as bad as the first Oh man. Here's a man. Brutal. Here's a man who was worth it. Come up. This will be enjoyable to take Mari this Mari just made it there. She's, oh man. Her husband oh. is gonna go over. Help her. Oh, 
Good job, woman. So good. So, this is Ting Boche, and right in the middle, that huge one up there, is Everest. I think that's Nupsi, Everest, Lhotse, behind the clouds. So, today we're gonna make it up in that direction a little ways. This guy's working on stone, we got yaks, and we're gonna go and check out this monastery here. See what it says. Another big prayer wheel. Definitely give this one a spin. Always clockwise. There we go. Spin the wheel. We've come across something very interesting. We're going to make the last couple miles to Pengboche, but. Check out this soccer field, man. It's got two posts. Got the lawnmower at work right there. We got the referee's house up there. Prayer flag crossbar. This is the coolest soccer field ever. I don't think the ball would roll very well, but pretty awesome. If I had a ball, I'd be having a smack at it right now. We're heading through the rhododendron forest on this extremely rough yellow brick road. But it's impressive that it's here at all. Someone put a tremendous amount of work to get this all done. It's pretty cool. And it's like a little tunnel through. We're going down for a ways. Which means again, what does it mean? Uphill. Yeah, we gotta go up again to the next place. We'll probably be getting in somewhere between 6 and 6.30, going at a leisurely pace, taking our time up the hill on the way back up. Everybody's monitoring how we're feeling. We've been going a lot faster than the guided groups will have gone. We're on our second day. The guided groups would be on their fifth day here probably. So, a bit different going through on your own pace. Some people are surprised we don't have a guide, but really the path is pretty simple, so it's not so bad. A lot of little villages on the way as well. About 12,500 feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is our trail. It's just skirting the edge of this cliff. And the river is descending so quickly. If you can see below, that's just massive water pumping into that rock down there. That could be a very brutal place. And you can see the trail has been built up a little here, but this is definitely a natural slide area. So. I'm sure there are times when the trail is washed out. This is kind of wild. We've been following these cables along for a while in this area that it looks like maybe one time it had a bridge, but now it doesn't. This might have been a casualty of the earthquake. So. I wonder what the alternative is here. There. Oh, wow. Yeah, it would be fun to scale down it, wouldn't it? These guys over here with the rope, I think, are trying to throw across a line over to where she is. It's going to be a hell of a throw to get it across, but they're coming down this dirt embankment and stuff is just flying off the edge. Rocks are coming every which way. This is the alternative path. It goes along the side and then there's the bridge up there. We're gonna go and check it out. Looks like Alec is down there seeing how we do. Wow. This is cool. You wanna watch the throw? So you wanna watch the throw? Oh, yeah. Oh, that would not be a good river to fall into. 
Oh, he wants to throw right here? Yeah, he's landing it here. <laughs> yeah, get totally out of the way. He's fine? Oh, yeah? Really? So he just came from Everest Base Camp right now. Yeah, yeah. So you come down this yeah, morning yeah. to him? I would finish already finish Everest. Everything's done. Uh, let's see if they make okay. the throw. Okay. 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 See you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you so much. He says this thing is, is Camp 3. Camp 3. Not quite. Oh, he had a chance, but he wasn't letting out the line fast enough. What are they trying to do? They're trying to get the line across. I know, but why? So that you can pull a cable across. Oh. He says that this, this broke three years ago. Oh, really? We've left the little temporary bridge behind. The bridge apparently four years ago, or three years ago went. Tom's up ahead a little. And above us, you can see the massive mountains. That should be Everest right there. We're heading towards base camp in that direction. I think we probably have 40 minutes, 30 minutes, three, 400 feet of ascent till we get to the town where we're gonna post up for the night, decide what we'll do tomorrow um, in terms of acclimatization, what's around. So, we want to do it smart, but we also don't want to spend more time than we need to out here because of the amount of time we've allotted for the trip, which is less than most, but I think it's a fairly capable group, so we'll see what happens. Having a fantastic, fantastic time. A gate. It's portentous. Passing little stupas. I'm seeing the mountains in the sun where we're in the valley and in the shade right now. Lots of oh my gods. Looking at where we are, where we're coming from. Wow, indeed. It'll be good to tuck in tonight, have a nice rest, recuperate for tomorrow. This might be as clear as you can see Everest. We're still making tracks to Pengboche, but Everest is in the sun. There's probably people up there trying to climb it right now. If you look around, Boy, oh boy, what a view, what a view. We are bringing it home to Peng Boche for the night. All these terraces for livestock and whatnot. If we look up, we can see the mountains right in the sun. It's amazingly gorgeous. That's Everest. You know, when I saw it, I thought maybe I'll want to climb it, coming close to it. I don't know, man. It just doesn't hold quite that allure. If someone gave me a spot on an expedition, I might, but I'm I definitely don't feel driven to do it. There's so many other good things to do that are <laughs> not quite as risky. Not that I mind risk, but man, look at that. That's sobering looking at that. Excellent. So we are going to start our third day. We've made it up to uh, Dengboche, and we're looking for Pengboche. No, we're in Pengboche, we're heading to Dengboche, and then we're going to evaluate. Um, a lot of trips take four or five days to get here, but we've done it in two. So we're going to 
see what happens. We're taking a somewhat mellow day. We'll see how we feel at lunch when we get there. We have emptied a lot of bottles of water, stuck them into the bladder. Here's the pack I'm carrying. I think I've used about 20% of the stuff in the pack so far. <laughs> but, like I said, probably weighing in maybe 40, 45 pounds, something like that. Not a light pack, but I got the stuff I need. And we woke up, <laughs> looked out this morning, and it was absolutely cloudless. Now we got a little bit of cloud. But we had a good breakfast. We're geared up ready. <laughs> Alec is buffed up with his map face. Where'd you go? In terms of scenic routes, it is not so shabby. This is about as stellar a terrain as you could imagine. It's funny, the Himalayas, all the other places I've been, there's this kind of mountain area, and then there's one level up in the clouds, which you just don't see in other places. Like one extra level. And this is the main Base Camp Trail is probably used more than any other one in the region. I'm sure some of the lesser traveled ones would be super cool to visit. Wow. All kinds of interesting artwork and religious stuff. And then you look up all of a sudden and there's a horse almost straight over our heads. I guess that's where all the steps come from, from animals like that going ahead and eating. But just village up there. Guru. Rinpoche. I don't know if it's someone who's revered and past or someone who's current. We are getting to be in a zone where there's no trees and it feels like there's a lot of different options on pathways to go. There are cairns, these little things. I'm embarrassed to say we still don't know exactly what they are. So there's a ridiculous amount of wind here, so this might not be the greatest quality of sound with helicopters and whatnot. But Mari's not feeling so well, a little nauseous, low energy, headache. So we're a little worried about altitude sickness, so we're retreating a little bit, altering our plans for the day. I'm gonna stay put for a little while and see what happens so they're just coming into the closest place we're having an executive meeting here we got Tom and Alec and Mahari Mahari with the sad face but we've come from Pangboshe right here up to Orsho and Mahari's feeling the altitude because we've come up we're all feeling it a little bit but Mahari's feeling it more worse than us at the moment and we don't want to push her into a uncomfortable zone. So the proposal is we go back to Pengboche, which is a little lower. And once we get there, just stay there for a day, see what happens tomorrow. Uh, and then we have decisions to make. Otherwise, we could go further back down to Funky Tenga. But if we go to Funky Tenga, that's a big uphill to come back out. Um, I've got a week less than these guys. So whatever happens, I will probably take off tomorrow and see if I can get up. Um, if they're feeling great, fantastic. Everybody will head up. If not, I might be solo for a while. Or Alec may want to join. A little bit, maybe. We'll see. We'll Although see. you guys are hanging out together, so. Yeah. So back to Pangloche, different place that doesn't have a vomitous toilet area. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's a plan. We'll see what happens. Photo. Yeah, we do. Photo Everybody's photo geared up. Video too. We've got rain. It's been decided Tom and Alec are going to retreat with Mari to Tengboche. Alec's going to be very happy there because there's a big cell tower and he's got data. Raining today. It's foggy. It's wet. Uh, I'm going to go up. They're going to go down, take at least another day. They're going to bring Mari down most likely to Namche Bazaar. I'll see her in a couple days. Left her with uh, 
my laptop with a couple seasons of entertainment on it. Hopefully she'll feel better. She'll be able to do some hikes around there as well, go see a Yeti skull that's supposed to be in a monastery up there and a couple other things. Um, a little poignant because it'd be nice to have everybody together, but we do what we got to do here. And I will be trucking on my own. I got my gear on right now, my foul weather gear. This is all covered. And these guys are going to be going down while I'm going up. I basically got, I got two days, two and a half days. And then I'm going to make it down all the way in two days. Here comes Tom. He's very excited. He's got, he gets to use his umbrella, his carbon fiber umbrella. It works. If he can open it. He's going to, he's going to, look at that. What civilization. Here comes the masked bandit. She's going to be feeling better in a day or two. Maybe stomach, maybe altitude, maybe a combination of two. But we are all going to connect again at some point. So, all right. Okay. Hey, buddy. Feel better. Oh, no, you I'll see you in a couple nose. days. See you, Carrie. <laughs> it's been fun for us. See we'll see you. Keep in touch. Let me know where you guys end up going. And I'll, I will not forget the hiking poles. And we'll go from there. I think I'm going to get in front of this mule train. So. Hi, man. Have fun. I met Nima here. Nima? Yeah. He is marking. He's flagging the course for the marathon. Yeah. <laughs> he told me that the organizer is down in Namche, who I spoke to. I don't think they'll still let me run, but I'm going to be covering the same course. So it's I very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Good work. Yeah. A little bit different than the normal flagging. It's actually. Uh, this is a part of the full marathon. Yeah. yeah. So this is the full marathon course. Yeah. yeah. Do you have I mean, the ultra course too or no? Ultra course is the aeroplane from. You go Nam out yeah. and then back in. Nam yeah. I hope I hope I get to run with you guys. We'll see. Are you going to run as well or no? No. You'll support. You'll sweep. No, I'll be in Namche in just a month. Oh, you'll be at the finish? Yeah. Well, I'll see you there on, yeah, on the okay. night in Namche. Yeah, see you in Namche. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Good work. Okay. Well, that's cool. I'll be able to actually follow the course markers and back up. I don't know if he's come all the way down, but having the markers in place, that's a nice, <laughs> a nice comfort marking thing for on the way back. If I manage to find somebody to take my bag from Gorak Shep, which is the last place where you can um, find lodging, a tea house or a guest house, before base camp, which is several miles away, then I'll more or less run the whole thing, whether I'm actually in the race or not. So I guess it's technically banditing a little bit, although I'm not having a number, I'm not using the aid, and the course is not closed, and it happened to be my exact plan anyway, so. But on the way, you can see markers. Whereas in the US, they use, in Canada, they use plastic taping. Here, they're actually using cloth and bamboo. It's pretty cool. meeting Rania and Yarno who are coming Hi. down. They've been up at base camp and you had a beautiful view yesterday from, mm -hmm. what's it called again? Kalapatar? Ka Kalapatar. Kalapatar. Yes, yeah. And we're talking about videos. So they, they, they might go and check out my Bigfoot the video. Bigfoot, or, yeah. Bigfoot 200. But we were talking about the Everest, Everest Marathon and the fact that it's going on and whether it actually, the little, I met the guy who's marking the course, Nair. So these are red flags yeah, that you see? Yeah, we're following the flags. We don't know where to go. Red flags <laughs> are the marathon course. I saw the dude doing, setting them up. So you should... And you're going how far today? We're going to Namche. Right. Oh, Namche. Yeah. yeah, that'll be good. That's a good day. Yeah, so you'll, you'll get down there. Nine hours? Because we're not that fast. Yeah. We're just... It's general downhill. Yeah, you got general, a couple yeah. couple uphills to deal with. Yeah, but, we did one there, so you'll have to go in a minute uphill, but <laughs> you'll be fine. I think we actually made it up that uphill yesterday, so I'm doing it again. Oh wow, really? Maybe it wasn't that far. Oh, there wow. was a that's, bigger that's uphill. That's absolutely hardcore. <laughs> so. <laughs> One or two class worse. Yeah. Well, good luck, people. Thank yeah. you. You, you too. as well. Stay safe. Cheers.
Yeah. Um, here, so you climb together. Yeah. And how did your climbing go? It was pretty good. We had pretty tough, uh, a few rough weather. It was a rough weather up there? Up there and uh, we were very lucky on the 22nd. I come in spotless wind. So you were able to get to where you wanted to go? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were there in the dark. So you got to the top of Everest? Yes. Oh, <laughs> man. It's unbelievable. Good job, both of you guys. What are your names? My name is Ang, Ang Ching. Ang Ching? Ang Ching Mama. Kai Sherpa. Ai Sherpa. You guys both Nepali or from different places? No, no, no. You're from Nepal. Yeah. Wow. So, good for you. That's fantastic. You. Whenever I see someone coming down and they've got, like, you know, the dark <laughs> sound, like they were somewhere high for a long time. <laughs> Good for you guys. Thank What's your you. National, National Park, Park Service. Service? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's You're super from the cool. States as well? I, I live in Canada, actually. Okay, yeah. But I spent a lot of time in the States. Yeah. I used to work for um, the National Park. Oh, rescue. really? Yeah. Which, which National Park? Or just Denali, the... Rainier. Oh, Denali and Rainier. Yeah. So you've been oh. up in uh, both Washington and Alaska then? Yeah. Well, in Wyoming. Oh, yeah. Good for you. So uh, were, you, were you guys here to climb yourselves, or were you part uh, of an expedition no, no, no. supporting was expedition? For, for me, it's my personal climb. Ah, I see. Yeah, and but we were all in. A, um, I got a. This guy gave me a place to stay at the base camp. So. That's a nice thing. That's a really nice thing. Howdy, guys. Hello. Howdy, howdy. Wow, that's so exciting. Good yeah. for you. Thank you. That's good. For, how long you been out here? Uh, how long? A couple of months now. Yeah. Two and months. We were guiding up our own private trips. So you're guiding private trips as well? Yeah, and then, then, then we went on Everest. <sighs> That's so cool. Well, I'm just happy to get up and see it. I don't have enough time to do everything. All right. You hopefully you get a good day. It's just today like that. It's like foggy. Yeah, it's been, we've had three days so far. It's been beautiful every day. First day, I think it doesn't look like it's uh, too thick. So it's, it's, it's all right. It'll, it'll lift up. Yeah, I hope so. I'll get up and maybe uh, tomorrow go and try and go up uh, a little overview. Oh yeah, yeah, Kalapatar. Yes, Kalapatar. Yeah. Yeah. Go and see that, and then head to base camp on the 29th. Yeah. They've got this marathon thing. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what the thing I do, but I didn't know about it until I came here. But uh, my plan was on the same day to do the same course. Same course. So I'm gonna. If they let me in, great. If they don't, I'll just okay. run. You should be able to, I guess. Yeah, I'll find someone to carry my yeah. pack so I can run. They should be porters. Yeah, no, I think so too. I'm happy to pay a good price. If they can get from there to Namche in one oh, yeah. day, I'm happy. Yeah. Let's take a little rest. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Look at that thing. It's bigger All than right, you. you. Have a good day. Hey, hopefully, congratulations again. Hopefully hopefully pleasure to meet both of you. You get to run. Well, I'm going <laughs> to run no matter what. Yeah. So hopefully I still feel fine by the time yeah. we start going. But. You should be able to. You just do a few more days. Good job, guys. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can just see the people who've been up there for a while. They're just cruising down, having a good old time. Because this is, I don't know, I guess we're at 14,000 feet here. So they're quite a bit lower than they have been for a while, two months. Wow. Up a little down below, I've been following this river still. That looks like the bridge we have to cross over. And I think that little town right there is Perishe. So Dingboche is up in that direction, and we're skipping that, doing a little bit of a shortcut to Durbar. And still feeling good, no headache, no nausea, feel hydrated, I've been drinking. A little tingly here and there, but I think that's just partial excitement and a little bit of cold. Man, it is something seeing folks coming down from the high stuff <laughs> I know earlier I was like this is not something I will consider but seeing the smile on that guy's face how everything cooperated it really would be something stellar to do so who knows never say never just like at one point I said, I wasn't going to do another 200 or any crazy races like that, but I keep signing up for them because they're irresistible. Boy, this place is just absurdly picturesque. What they've turned this really rocky terrain into, nothing short of 
spectacular. You Calgary? Not Calgary. I have a lot of friends from there. From from Calgary? Calgary, Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Are you coming down? Yeah. Yeah, right now? Yeah. Well, I like your hat. Calgary. Calgary, Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> sea Beach. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Andres Kilo, and then go up Gary and down. Four bags, 100 kilos. Yeah. You? No, I am. Somebody else. Somebody. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And this is Hidar? Yeah, Hidar. Hidar. He's going up to base camp to take a load down. And the funny thing is, he's going all the way up there today. <laughs> he's going all the way to base camp. He's going to grab two bags and then come back down to where maybe I'm staying tonight again. So, tons of extra mileage, tons of extra bag. It's crazy. Yeah, tough, tough people. Tough, tough people. You have my respect. <laughs> so, so cool. Talking with Herdar on the way up. But now we're starting to go uphill, and I do not want to slow him down, <laughs> and I don't want to go too fast. So in a minute, I will probably say goodbye to him as we go up the hill, because I don't want to make you slow. <laughs> Maybe I am slow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're slow, I don't think you're slow. If you put the strongest man in the world, Hapthor Bjornsson, that's got to be easy 200 pounds. And told him at altitude to carry it. It would be insane. Namaste. My respect to these porters uphill at altitude. little 100 pound Nepali guy versus 400 pound strong man carrying 200 pounds uphill at altitude for miles. <laughs> I think the strong man would get destroyed. <laughs> it would be so funny. The weather is opening up. We're starting to be able to see peaks around. Be able to appreciate the scale. Trail continues to be rocky, but well-traveled. All the base camp expeditions are breaking down, so they've got their porters and Sherpas going up and down, bringing stuff down. You'll see people with <laughs> an entire kitchen pots and pans and stuff all hanging from a wicker basket that they're carrying down, pop-up tents, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so the season is just about over for most of the conventional expeditions. There's been a few tragedies on the mountain this year. Two foreigners and two Sherpas died in a tent um, part way up, maybe camp two or three. They left a stove on and all succumbed to carbon monoxide poisoning. That would just be terrible. Well, this is a terrific uphill incline. The pace and the average grade is just perfect for continuing forward. Breathing hard, working hard, not trying to go too fast. 
I am very much enjoying this. The distances now are not long, they're trivial. It's just the altitude. Definitely breathing hard going up. But if I stop, even for a minute or two, my breathing goes back to normal. And this uphill, I am very much enjoying it. I think I'll get to where I'm hoping to get to today. I'm hoping to get online, catch up on email, see if there's any word about the marathon. <laughs> it is a little poignant to be on my own again, missing my people. I think they'll be on their way up soon enough. You can see the high altitude porters and the Sherpas who are coming down from base camp or higher who have been supporting these expeditions. I think the high altitude Sherpas have a total swagger. Man, they are just bouncing down the hill. They get charisma all over, radiating out. They are like the top dogs. And they are, honestly, they, there goes one. It's so interesting. Here we are to another bridge. We're going to cross over. This river is just wild. It's just boulders in this crazy moraine on the way down. I've also been passing groups today who are guided. I get a very surprised look when people ask, oh, do you have a guide? <laughs> and you explain, no, no guide. Oh, oh, this is cool path. Look at this. I'll be enjoying this one. But seeing the pace that the guided groups take, it would drive me nuts. I would not do well with that. Oh, I love this kind of stuff. Weird little bridges. Keeps me smiling, keeps my spirits high. <laughs> Just amazing. <laughs> so many superlatives I know to try and stop, but I'm sure you'll hear many more. We are just up probably six, seven hundred feet above Durbar. Sustained climb. And there are a number of trekking groups. I think these are clearly memorials, by the way. And they're all over for various Sherpa. in a terrorist attack when climbing Nanga Parbat. And they have a memorial here. Those are Chinese climbers. Risto Pradanov, Bulgaria. Wow. I think the biggest thing that's helping me get up is what I call caterpillar mode. You're breathing hard, you're working steady, and you're just sustaining that at a nice even pace, tempo. And I've done it enough to know that I can do that for a long time and be fine. So, probably just on that last little climb, past maybe 40, people in different groups just slow and steady up
<laughs> they're all gonna be needing to camp somewhere as well. We'll see. But uh, a lot of the elevation to get to the next place. And honestly, it's not that far. It's been, I'm not gonna say easy, because I'm breathing hard, but haven't really been sweating, drinking a good bit. Hydration is pretty solid. And I'm feeling good, so I am considering checking the elevation difference between Latse and Gorak Shep. Maybe going all the way up to Gorak Shep if it's not a big difference. But I think it is a little bit of a difference. But I might just drop my pack at a place and then continue and maybe even visit base camp today and come back down lower, sleep. Next day, go back up to Bor Gorak Shep and then set up for climbing to the viewpoint. The sun is penetrating because it's not this cloud that we see and mist may disappear later, which would be fantastic because you always know that there's another layer of mountain here. The extra level that the Himalayas do. First time I've had to put my sundog glasses on today. It's a little bright. Good to protect my eyes. So, strangely moving and emotional being up here, especially by yourself. I know it's so close. This thing that I've read about for so long and heard about for so long. <laughs> and at this point, I think it's a pretty good chance that I'm gonna get to see it. Hopefully the weather cooperates a little bit. I might go early morning where it tends to be clear. Go up to that viewpoint. See if I can get a couple pictures. Might have to rustle up an acro partner up there if I can find somebody. Hello. Hey, how's it I'm good. How about you? It's good. I'm on my way back. I love the Aussie how you going thing. It's always great. Well, I'm, I'm on the way up. I'm going. It's one o'clock. Just arriving at Lobouche Village. I'm told there's a lot of people in Gorak Shep up farther because of the marathon. <laughs> Basic rules. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, I'm thinking I might, yes. Uh, so you have to get the uh, accommodation. Coming here is, you get a coupon, you pay 500 rupees for it. That's five dollars for the night, by the way. It's more than the other places we've been spending, which is 200 per room, two people, so about 100 per night. But I will pay five dollars. And there's seven lodges in town. There's only one, which would be more expensive. So I'll go look at some of them, see which one has the most appealing accommodations, sit down and chill out for a while, might get online, and maybe go for a further walk today, if I feel ambitious. So, this is what a $5 tea house room looks like. You've got two really basic cots. Each of them have a comforter, and there's a pillow, and there's a shared restroom. The locks are kind of funny. They're these tiny little <laughs> pad locks. Mm. Looks like my bed is not quite as long as the mattress, so the feet are definitely going to be hanging off the end. But for $5 up here at almost 5,000 meters. So we are at 16,000 feet here, something like that, but a legit 5,000 meters. 
um, still feel really good, uh, despite the fact that it's just four days to get up here from Lukla with that day of rest we had yesterday. Um, toying with the idea of going for a hike today, but I may also buy a data package on their probably extremely crappy Wi-Fi, which will probably cost twice what the room costs. But uh, for me to be able to catch up and stay in touch with the others, that would be invaluable. So I will just let them know of my progress, let them know I'm still feeling good. Hopefully I'll hear from them, see what they're doing as well. I hope Mara's feeling much better. Um, hope Tom is looking after her, but <laughs> I can't believe I'm here. Good bit of sun. Here's our little tea house where I spent last evening talking to a Frenchman, a Romanian, two Kiwis, a Spaniard, a couple Americans, and some Nepalis. And this is the day. Not much of a view anywhere, but we're going to hope for the best as we go up. So, my plan is to go up. I've got my light pack. I'll be coming back to Lobouche tonight. Today will be a climbing to Gorak Shep, going to actual base camp itself, and then climbing to the viewpoint and hoping that maybe it clears a little so we'll have a good view of the big mother. So, still feeling pretty good, no headaches or anything, so we'll see. We got these red flags for the marathon marking, which I can follow. I will stop in Gorak Shep to see if I can find anybody from the marathon. Plead my case one more time. If I don't compete, I'm really fine with it. I'll just incorporate my experience on the course <laughs> into my overall video. If they let me in, I'll do a specific race video. Eh, we'll see what happens. Oh, look at this, a helipad. <laughs> they got it cleared. As long as the yaks move, I guess you could clear someone out of here if you needed to. So, fingers crossed we're going to have a great day. <laughs> Get to actually see base camp, a place I've read about so much in the past. I'm excited, even if it looks like this. Just in case you're wondering what the cutest thing on earth is, has got to be a baby yak. Check out this little dude hanging out right with Mama. What a lovely... Hey there. Hello. Oh my word. It's about 9.30. I've been going for about 50 minutes. Pretty much straight uphill. Up here, tantalizing glimpse of the sun. I talked to people who went to Kalapatir, the overview of the Everest mountain. This morning is totally socked in. Some people think the thing to do is to do it during the morning to catch sunrise, but I don't think that's going to be good. Like, it's actual sun right now hitting me. That there, first sign of glacier, and it's, it's gorgeous. I'm still feeling okay. I'm probably at whew, 5,016, probably between 16 and 17,000 feet, 500 and, or 5,300 meters, roughly, something like that. And a little bit more to go. You can see the path up there, people zipping along. I'm going light with just my small pack today, so sort of fun. Coming to a glacial stream that feeds into the river 
on the Kumbu Glacier. Look at this dude working his way down. Amazing with that lot on his back. Still feeling reasonable, moving easy, which is encouraging. Big jam coming into Gorak Shep. an hour 15 to get to Gorak Shep, which I think is good time. I'm gonna chill for a minute, see if there's any marathon people here, talk to them, and then I'm just gonna continue to base camp. And then on the way back, check out Kalapatur, and that will be my high point. Good to work out during the day, go high, sleep a little lower so I'll just turn around and go back but this will give me an idea of how long it'll take to get up next time welcome all participants Everest Marathon <laughs> well we'll see Namaste, hello. Hello, Namaste. Are you guys part of the marathon? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? Is there a uh, office or something like that for the marathon or no? Sorry? Is there an official place for this around here? No, base camp. Just in, there, in base camp? Okay. Well, I'll wander up there then. The first kind of open plain area I've seen. <laughs> Everest Base Camp. Kalapathar. So that's where I'm going to have to go up a little later. Cross my fingers. We'll get a bit of a clearing up there. But first things first, base camp. Still feeling pretty good. Breathing heavy, obviously, especially when going uphill. And there'll be more uphill here. But <laughs> this is a good climatization day. There is a glacier. I don't think that's the Kumbu Glacier. It's feeding into it. I think that's up there. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. The sun is just hinting. I'm gambling and hoping for the best. For views, we will see. These guys are coming up with breaking down camps. Just got a bunch of the Nepali greyhounds passing through, running without particularly breathing hard at all. Oh my. Crazy blue green glacial ponds and then glacier, moraine, and peaks. Just peekaboo. This is such inspiring terrain. Whew. There. Look to me like base camp, which means. 
the ice fall and the Kumbu Glacier proper are up there. So, not too far away from a bucket list, a bucket list visit. Namaste. Very interesting sharing the trail with the yak trains and the Sherpas and the trekkers and climbers. Incredible, beautiful, beautiful. Oh my God, because you doubt whether you can get up here in the time I've got, but <laughs> no, I'm 99.9% .9 sure I'll be hitting base camp here shortly. That's what I'm doing now, like as a volunteering. Yep. I take runners to many different places, like sometimes Anakuna Riz and sometimes only in Kathmandu. I see. I'm in Everest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you're out in the mountains a lot. Yeah. This is my new Nepali friend. Remind me your name? Dinesh. Dinesh. <laughs> and we're just heading into base camp here. Too close. He's with a team of seven Nepali runners. Or six Nepali runners. Six, including me seven. <laughs> including him seven. Got some knee and ankle issues, so he's gonna probably run down to Namche tomorrow. Only 26 miles of hard terrain. <laughs> and then meet his team down there. Oh my word. So you've been up here a lot. Yes. Okay, so I know there's clouds everywhere. <laughs> Let's assume there's no clouds. What am I looking at? Everest, Lhotse, Nupse is this side. Okay. And then uh, uh, this side of mountains lies in Tibet. Uh -huh. Because it's too close from Tibet, yep. but they have a name too. It's called uh, um, Tsola, and this one is uh, Pumari. Pumari. Yeah. So the the Kalapatar Kalapata is, overlook yeah. looks this way, and then you see Everest here. Yes. I'm gonna go up that later today and hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there'll be because you can just see a little bit here and there, right? And it's another 10, 12,000 feet, so maybe you see something? Yeah. <laughs> on this really technical terrain, so everybody's got to dance down over the rocks in order to avoid them. And it's such unstable terrain. This is going to make it official. These prayer flags <laughs> are the official mark of base camp. So, from La Boucher, two hours, 20 minutes, an hour five from Gorak Shep. I'm just going to wander around, check it all out. Look at this. The terrain around here is otherworldly. You can just hear rocks dropping off and decaying into the glacial pools. Towards the end of the day, it would clear up. So I'm gonna take my time wandering around base camp and appreciating it. Head back down to Low Boucher, sleep a little bit lower. And then see what tomorrow holds. I'm still feeling good. I haven't had a headache all the way up. My stomach has been good. I've been eating and drinking. I have the musical yak bells, probably partially so you can find them 
when you need to. Very, very cool. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, within, within one and let's say 40 days. Yeah. Piled like this. And left that stone up there. Yeah. That's so beautiful. I love that you have your flags attached to it. What uh, what expedition are you with? We're well, Asian Trekking Eco Everest Expedition. So you have a lot of clients around? Uh, not not more laps now. Everybody's gone down? Yeah, already. So you have to break camp? Yeah. But the weather is not good. It was waiting for good weather. What what kind of weather do you need to break down and go? We need uh, two hours uh, good hot good weather. Dry the tents. Oh, I see. And then pack. But because we have to storage in Lobuche. Yes. For one year. Yeah, yeah. If wet, then that would be. No. So. Lobuche, that's where I started this morning. Yeah. And where are you from? Canada. Canada. Oh. Canada. Yeah. Me, I've always read about this place. This is like a dream to be here. It's crazy. Yeah. Amazing. Did you have success with yes, your yes, clients? Yes. How many people got up to the top? Uh, including... Including Sherpa? Including Sherpa 18. 18. Yes. Fist bump for that. Thank you very much. Good job. Good job. Yeah. What's your name? I'm Naga. Naga? Yeah. I'm Kerry. Nice to meet you. Such a pleasure to meet you. Gosh, this place is amazing. You come here every year? Yeah. It's a good office. I were here 27 years. 27? That means you're as old as me almost. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 50 now. 50? See, I'm 49. This yeah. year I'll be 50. <laughs> Looking good there. Yeah. That's great. Well, I am going to wander up to the top and back down. And go up Kalapater and hope that today. I hope I see a good view. Yeah. I'm a little bit above base camp now. And just playing around a little bit in the Kumbu Glacier area. There are crazy formations everywhere. Now formations I'm sure are mildly dangerous but there it is that's what you got to get through to get up to the higher camps and then Everest is up here and up here you can't see it from base camp <sighs> seen some porters coming down this appears to be the trail up to the Kumbu Icefall. I'm sure it changes a lot, but I want to go up just a little ways and explore, see what it's like, another legendary place. Totally otherworldly. snowing right in your face and I've gotten back to Gorak Shep from base camp looks like some people over there are going up but with this weather I'm not gonna bother feeling feeling altitude a little bit for sure right now although I've been moving along at a pretty swift pace Head back to La Boucher, sit down, chill out for a while, have some tea, quick snack, see what the weather does. But based on this, no views of Everest at the moment. Driving back in La Boucher. And the weather does not look great. After talking to the marathon people again, 
Seems like a bit of a long shot that it's all going to work out for me to enter. So, hello, hello. Hey, hey, guy. I am considering even heading back down. One thing I need to make sure of is that I catch my flight. And if the weather's like this, having two days to catch it instead of one would be really useful. So I'll think about it, regroup tonight, and see what happens. As you can see, it's sunny. Here are the latest developments. I met a mountaineer named Ricardo, who lives in Colorado, originally from Mexico last night, and was gonna go down to Namche with him unless we woke up and found that the weather was fine. Which it is. So I'm gonna stack up my day. It's gonna be a little bit ambitious. All the way up Kalapater, hopefully for a view of Everest to Nupsi, and then all the way back down to Namche. I'll probably get there dark. I left my bag here in Loboche. They might find a porter to bring it part way. And if they do, great. I'll be able to move faster. If they don't, well, <laughs> I'll be humping the bag along and seeing Mari tonight in Namche, I hope. The next two days, I should be down in Lukla. And those next two days seem like they might be okay for flying. I must say, right there, I'm not 100% sure what mountain that is, but I'm guessing it's Noopsy. And that was not visible at all yesterday. I'm pretty excited, hoping we get some views from Kalapatar to Shabby. Been moving pretty well with a uphill pace, breathing hard. It's about 1,200 feet or 500 meters to go arc Shep, and then another 500 meters whew, to Kalapatar. The breathing hard is just kind of par for the course. <laughs> but I can definitely derive energy from just looking around. It's phenomenal. And it's so cool to see it. <sighs> With sun. Fingers crossed. Kalapatar, give me the view. I'll be much indebted to Cholomunga if it reveals itself to me. Sometimes this is the trail. There's a bunch of choices to take and pick the most direct usually. I must say. This is lovely. I've worn the Ultra Olympuses, which have a good bit of padding, but just a running shoe. They've improved them a lot. The sole, which I used to complain about, is now pretty beefy, doesn't seem to be wearing out like the other ones. So I'm happy with the shoe. So, faster today to Gorak Shep, which is just down there. From Lukla, I'm at 
an hour right now. So counted an hour five. The trail basically goes up there. I think there's a false summit and then another summit. Base camp over there, Kumbu Glacier, where we were yesterday. This climb up Kalapater will put me higher in elevation than I've ever been. I think it's but it's around 18,000 feet, I think. And having just five days up is uh, a little un unusual for acclimation. So, doing, doing good so far. I'm sure it'll be feeling it on the way. <sighs> These guys are incredible. A good sign that we found the way to Kalapathar. Hopefully... Oh my god. Doing okay. The path just continues up. You can see a few people there going up and down. I think this mountain here would be Lhotse. An 8,000 meter peak, I think. Because I think just up there is the Kumbu Ice Fall. And then you go up to the saddle between that and Everest, which will be behind here, which will hopefully reveal itself when we get to the top. Helicopters below flying to base camp. feeling okay. I'm trying to drink a little liquid. When I get up to the top, I'll sit down and celebrate with a bit of food, maybe a gel, some water, tea, and then straight back down. Going up to 99 and leaning on sticks for a second. <sighs> Lotsi, Noopsi, ever somewhere behind there. <sighs> Making good time, but breathing hard. <sighs> this will be my high point, probably already at my high point. Can't wait. Been going up for 45 minutes. Figure at least another half hour, maybe a little bit more. Well, that's the top, those prayer flags right there. It's taken me an hour to get here. Another five minutes to the top. Definitely faster than I thought I would be, which I'm pleased about. And the day is perfect. Clear view of the first, it's the dark, stony one right there. The sharp, pointed one there is Lhotse. Lily Steck died about a week ago. Climbing solo. Unfortunately, I talked to a guy at our camp who had some campmates at Everest Base Camp who knew him and went and literally collected the pieces. They said it was grisly. Well, let's get to the top. Oh, there's one person, the last person up there is coming down. <laughs> so I'll be by myself at the top of Kalapatra. Where are you from? Latvia. Latvia. What's your name? Serbia. What is it? 
Evie. Evie. Yeah. That's just awesome. One of my dreams come true. That's one of my dreams come true too. Yeah. I can't wait to be up there. I wasn't sure I'd get a day where it was clear. I was going to go down. I was in Lobuche. I looked out and I said, you got to try. Exactly. There we go. Yeah. It was the same for me. I'm here since two days. Yeah. And yesterday the weather was quite bad. We just went to the oh, base camp. Oh, yeah. That's what we did too. Yeah. Do you have a camera? I can take a picture of you standing there. Well, here we are, highest I have ever been by a long shot. And the view is just incredible. I'll take you a full 360 degrees. There's this huge face here. here and I can see it. I'm gonna make the trek back out today. This is quite a Sunday adventure. Things have sort of cooperated to make it work. On this side again just beautiful little mountain lakes glacier coming down. I wish my wife and daughter could be here. <laughs> but I'm thinking about Danielle and Indigo very much. <sighs> oh my god, what a place. This is crazy. <laughs> Top of the country. <laughs> and here's a bunch of ridiculous stuff. Someone <laughs> hiked up a chimpanzee with a teapot and took it up and left it on top. friend here who seems to like pumpkin seeds. Come on, don't be shy. Gosh, look at this. I mean, it's not even windy here, it just feels perfect. To the pool and I went to do a track. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to do Everest on my own. So I was going to do it on the corner. And then there was a guy at my hotel who said, Yeah, quite fine. I've always wanted to do the base camp as well. So we looked at each other and we went, Shall we? Mm. So we're both here. And then we seem to have picked other people up along the way. Um, but they stopped part way up? Good lord. They don't feel very well. Oh, I can understand that. But it's not, I don't think it's altitude sickness. I think it's just like cold, tired. cold and yeah. tired. Although I feel totally warm here. Look oh, at that. I am buzzing. I was, I was doing some, like I was dancing a bit on the way up. Yeah. And he actually told me off. He was like, I think it's dangerous, Lisa. I don't <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> That's the appropriate response to anybody Thank who says you. dancing's dangerous, good lord. At this altitude. Every time we pass a set of porters or a guide group and they've got music going, yeah. I will dance right past them. Exactly. I oh think he's just resentful of my energy. <laughs> yeah. This has been the best fueling stop ever. Sun's come out. Everest has shown itself multiple times. 
we're looking at a drop. Oh my word, that is a bit of a crazy drop. I drop a rock. Make time down to Namche. The Everest Marathon. It's so challenging, chaotic to try and deal with them. I like being self-sufficient. My mileage today will be over 42k probably a tad under 50k and I will have had a high point 1500 higher than the marathon runners tomorrow my time won't be great because I'm gonna enjoy myself and I might have to be lugging 20 kilos of pack but super pleased to be able to run down the hill without difficulty. It's quite technical earlier. Now it's just a trail. Moving faster than planned. So we'll see if that keeps up today. Woo! Incredible. Coming into the bottom. Woo! That's quick and easy downhill. There's our sign. 1224. 20 minutes down. Huh. An hour, 10 minutes up, 20 minutes down. I'm pleased with that. 100% worth it. Now I got another hour to Lobouche. Puts me there. 130. Let's see if I'm grabbing my pack there or not. And then I've got a good hike to Namche. Six hours of daylight. I think there's a good chance I can make it in daylight. Still feeling fine and super pleased that despite not having real acclimation time, it's worked out. So, Lukla base camp, back down to Lobouche, up to Kalapatar, and then back to Lukla. Seven days. Six and a half, really. Really pleased with that. Not done, obviously, hard day today. But We'll see what happens. Getting a load, a big load, but a light load. Look at the size of this. Look at the size of this thing. It's 16 kg. 16 kg? 16 or 60? 60. 60. 60. 60. So, a little more than you weigh. My friend. I'm going down now. I yesterday went to base camp and came back. Today I went up to Kalapatar and I'm gonna try and make it down to Namche tonight. I have to do them down and do them. You are a hard, hard man. So much respect. Enjoy the rest of your day. I was just gonna give you a fist bump. It's a fist bump. So you go like this. Good to see you again. I'm glad I got to see you. Well, good luck with your load. So much respect to you. Remind me your name again. Kedar. 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 Kerry. Kerry and Kedar. Kerry and Kedar. That's right. I remember your mask with the flame on it. Take care. Bye, Kedar. Coming into La Boucher. Again, 50 minutes this time from Gorak Shep. So, I was able to do that circuit faster, which is a good sign. I've been running, so breathing heavy. 
right, here we go. The big question is, am I carrying my full pack from here or picking it up in Pengboche? We will see. Attached to EBC. Should be pretty quiet. And here we go. Hey, Kemba. Did someone take my bag or do I want me to take in my bag? I was going to Pengboche? Yeah. Oh, hooray! But I need to pay you for that then. How much does it cost for me to get the bag to Pengboche? This is Maya and Pemba. They've been my host for the last couple of days. How long ago did the bag leave? Ah, I'll show you the picture. Oh, good, good. I got a picture of my, my porter. Oh, this is exciting. I get to keep moving fast. Yeah, he. He did. He, he, and it's right on top. He, yeah. Okay. He had his own load and then. And then this. The and top. he's going to Pengboche. He's going to Pengboche. Where in Pengboche will he go? Mm. Amadablam Lodge. Amadablam yeah. Lodge. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is good news. I get to keep moving fast. Now, leaving that glacial moraine behind. Heading into Durbar next, I think. Oh, and the weather seems to be potentially starting to get a little cloudy. So, timed the day perfectly. That trail along there goes to Chola Pass. And this, we're gonna head to Fariche and cut out Dingboche to catch up to my pack at Pengboche and make it in a day early to Namche Bazaar. Frankly, I enjoy creating my own marathon more. This seemed like such a chaotic event. This is gonna be a high quality day. Look at this, 360 degrees. The off. Nice sign. Surprised it's not carved into the stone. So Ferry Che is a little shorter. Will get me to where I'm going. I'll keep my eye out for the porter with my bag, although I think he's gonna beat me for sure. But it's downhill, so time to put the camera away and run again. Coming into Ferice, about 35 minutes from Durbar. I'll just keep pulling, soldiering through. I might buy a thing of liquid here. At a quick stop in Perice. Ferice at the Himalayan Hotel, one of the beautiful tea rooms. <coughs> Had some of my own snacks that I'm carrying and a pot of lemon tea, which I filled up my, my <coughs> bottle as well. So had a nice, nice 20 minute break. Kind of like a aid station on Ultra, uh, except for on the top of Kala Patar, where I had probably 20, 25 minute break in the last five hours. These have been my, my stops. Now I'll head all the way to Pangboche, which is about a thousand feet down from here, although there's some up and down. So, still moving. Reached Shomari. This is where we stayed before when Mari was in distress. I'm guessing. Tom and Alec wouldn't have stayed there because of the lack of connection. But I haven't seen them, so I'm wondering if we passed each other. Uh, Pengboche, where my bag is, is that little outpost down there. So in that downhill, it's uh, 345. <clears throat> it 
took me, hello, namaste. namaste. Took me four hours to get up from here to Loboche. And it took me two hours and 15 minutes with a 20 minute coffee break in Ferice to get back down. So bleeding off altitude and that downhill much faster. It's uh, 3.45, so I know I've got essentially another three and a half hours until it starts getting properly dark. And I can make some good ground up there. We'll see how much is runnable, especially if I've got my big pack on. There's a couple big downhills, and there's one proper uphill which will be caterpillar mode that's why i got the cat hat for caterpillar mode arrived in pengboche need to find the place where the porter brought my jacket but looking at some potentially ominous weather up ahead so we'll see how it all pans out i'll take a look at the distances too find out how far it is to get to Namche from here. But it's four, so that's two and a half hours from Lobuche. Moving pretty good. Still feel okay. And I'm told five hour hike, which would put me there 9.15. But I'm thinking I can do it faster. I'll go for <laughs> maybe 8.15. That'll be just after dark. But it'll be a different walk now with a full pack. Namaste. Well, we are making our way through a little gateway. It's incredible painting above. Heading to, you see the square edges up there. That's the Tengboshe Monastery. It's about the same height as this. So we gotta go down and then back up. We uh, checked it out on the way here. Had a nice time. There's a small chance that Alec is actually still there waiting for Tom. I'll figure that out when I get there. But I won't spend too long. I think there's a good chance I missed them and they went to Dingboche. I just hope they got my messages because there's no internet anywhere on this trail. The internet seems to be out in a lot of places with Everest Link. So hard to keep track of people. I'm sure that tonight <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of catching up to do with email. After the trip's over, I'll sort through my photos and start to post some of those as well. All prayers. All seeing eye. Nice white stupa down there. Nepali Ingenuity. They got the cables across. The little temporary bridge down there will be replaced. There'll be a nice up and down, no longer necessary. Should be pretty cool. So the Mount Everest Marathon. It looks like it's an interesting event but it's more intended to be a whole package arrangement. And I can see how that's something that would be handy because people are dropping like flies out of it who aren't familiar with the altitude. There's one guy from Holland who I talked to, team Cold Feet or something like that. He said five or six people on his team all dropped difficulties with altitude. 
and <laughs> it seems to me the suffer index would go up an awful lot really trying to put out and be competitive and if that's your deal you love to go and just suffer hard you're willing to pay a premium price for an event it might be good but communication is chaotic seems like there's a lot of question marks the course is obvious on the way and truthfully I think I'm having a much better namaste a much better day here doing it my way than if I was running and hitting different places true I'm carrying a lot more gear and I won't be tra <coughs> traveling quite as fast but <laughs> and it's event that I probably would not choose to come back and do if I wanted to do Everest Base Camp I think the way we did it works far better because we can adapt to weather so today for example I would have gone straight down in the morning except miracle of miracles it was patchy sun and then turned into more sun so I got to go up Kalapatar and get all the views that I've heard so much about so I would definitely do this I don't think you need a guide I wouldn't do it necessarily in seven days unless you're quite confident of covering a lot of ground and you manage to acclimate well which I seem to have lucked out and done so there's my thoughts on the on the marathon Vindale Lodge must be elves around here but we all have an important decision to make because on the way up here to Tingboche we're coming to a fork in the road and I'm not sure which direction to take <laughs> that isn't every day because I do that joke just powered up the hill Tingboche and the monastery maybe I'll find Alec and Tom maybe not Camelback's dry so I get water just a slow burn long uphill just sustain no stops it's 5.20 I forgot what time I left Pengboche but I'm sure it's a little more than an hour ago but feeling good in terms of timing Whew. continue onward missed you boys sorry Spencer Ohm take care bye bye yeah you too all right might get a little wet 540 uh, and the big news is Namche has no electricity no power so even when I get there I might not be able to catch up on internet or anything so it's gonna be hopefully I'll be able to find Mari hopefully I'll have light at the place where I'm going but I guess that's what we get long downhill now hill with a 45 pound pack on and we're just getting underneath the in the clouds now if you look over in this direction we're going all the way down you'll see a little building next to the rhododendron trees there and then there's a crazy uphill it goes all the way there and a path along there to Namche so that is my plan I have to say getting there and having no electricity uh, that will probably mean no hot shower I have to wait till Lukla I'm just imagining what there's some sort of hydro thing that got broken in Namche so if you have solar or a generator 
in theory you're okay. But I think I'll take this little short cutty one. Uh, in theory, the marathon has just been thrown another big curveball, so <laughs> it might even be more of a mess than, than I suspected it could be. So we'll see what happens. Going downhill, you don't breathe hard, but you're working your legs pretty good because of the weight and the technical terrain. Oof. Back on the main. And another little dirt one, but the main one seems just as steep, so. I'm at the bottom of the valley with a big climb, probably 1,500 feet to get up to Namche. So going into caterpillar mode. Steady climb. I think I've polished most of it off, but I'm fully certain there's gonna be some good up and down. Finishing with a down into Namche. Hoping I'll be able to connect with Mari, spend an evening dinner with her, and then maybe hang out with her a little bit tomorrow before heading to Lukla. I just need to get to Lukla in the evening. Although, having zero connection for three, four days now to the outside world is a, uh, <laughs> it's a strange thing. <sighs> yeah. It's one of these prayer rocks with a God painted on it. And of course, some more lovely uphill. Woo! With Pasang Sherpa. He is carrying yes. a hundred. We want Nam Chi and then. Uh, Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Lunch. Twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock. Yeah. Pasang Sherpa yeah, want, uh, is going yeah. just as fast as me, yeah. but he's carrying 120 pounds to my 50 pounds. TV? Yeah. We're going to stop in a minute, get some headlamp, and share some water. Yeah. <laughs> we are just taking a break of the stupa. <laughs> my friend Pasang Sherpa. Here he is. Okay, good way. <laughs> That's right. We just finished the last good of the time. liquid. No more liquid left. We had a little bit of tea. It is 750. 750. <laughs> Carrying the potter, yeah. Then go to the Lugla, come big very Imagal adventure, yeah. And then, you know, tomorrow uh, Lugla. Yeah, tomorrow Lugla. I've gotten to Namche at ten past eight. It is dark. No light. No electricity. And Pasang Sherpa has carried fifty-five pounds. 55 kilograms. This is where you stay? One minute. Yes. I will wait one minute. It is very nice. Super pleasure to meet you. I am lost. I am. I appreciate your. I appreciate your company. Yeah, okay. And. What are you doing? Kangri? Kangri, yeah. Down this way. Tomorrow? Tomorrow, I. It depends on my friend. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So you will go this way. I will go this way. Yeah. But I want to be able to buy you some dinner. Yeah. For dinner. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Please, my, I want to buy my friend dinner, <laughs> so you get some good food. Welcome, uh, I, I appreciate. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, yeah. do you, do you have email? Yeah, Kongri, I'm, I'm tomorrow morning only six thirty. Come, Kongri, and uh, we, uh, you know, at uh, six thirty. Maybe I'm sleeping. <laughs> Seventy. Seven o'clock. Seven seven thirty maybe. Okay. Kangri. Or tell Kangri. Thanks, Sherpa. My pleasure. My pleasure. You have a good night. Yeah. I'm you earned a good okay, sleep okay. tonight. Okay. <laughs> Take care, Fasang Sherpa. Okay. Maybe tomorrow in the morning I see you. Okay. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Possibly yes. Meet seven o'clock. I can I can get you I can get you some breakfast. Carry. Carry, carry, carry. Yeah, carry load, carry ward. Okay. All right. Take care, Fasang Sherpa. Bye bye. Well, made it into Namche successfully. Had a nice night's sleep and a shower last night, even though there's no electricity. And this is our view outside the window. So we we'll go down and have some breakfast. Maybe Passing Sherpa came as we planned. Um, have a nice day. Hey, are you filming? I am. So I found Mari. Bye, Karen. Thanks Bye -bye. So Thank you. I'm glad you're feeling better. I hope they come and rescue you soon. <laughs> I know, right? No, no electricity, no, no internet. No electricity, no internet, and now I don't even have anything, so. Well, you got a book. I got a book. And the guy next door told me that I could come exchange it when I finish it, so. Oh, really? I was like, perfect. That works. Yeah, so. That's good. Yeah. Well, well good. And well, right, we'll actually, Marathon is just the first few people are coming if you want to wander oh, really? up. Oh, Yeah. Okay, I might head up there. Probably big to do, but I'm mean, gonna avoid it. So. I might head up there. Check it out. They said that they're putting on the school kids are all putting on like a cultural dance performance for the marathon, marathon runners. Yeah, that's cool. I know. I thought that'd be kind of cool to see, but I, I think they're only letting marathoners in. But I don't know. Maybe I'll try and get in. There's rules, and then there's rules. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, well, this was my room for the night. Very luxurious. Own private bathroom. Free flushing, slippers. Flushing, flushing toilet. toilet. Free yeah. toilet paper. So. Okay, bye, Carrie. Cheers. So you'll try and send a message to the boys? Yeah, as soon as I have an internet connection, I will let them know the deal. Okay. So, I am buying a painting, a mandala painting, to display. One of the programs we do at work is called the Grand Mandala. And this is the painting which I'm getting. It is. The gold one or the. Asian carry gold one, sir. Real gold. Real gold. Ah, yes, it's this one. This one is the real gold? Yes, this is the one we're getting by Nima Lama. Yeah. It's okay, sir. Yeah. Just out of Namche. It's 11.30. Hoping to hit Lukla. 3.30 or 4. Giving us about four, four and a half hours. For probably about 12 to 13 miles. Which should be pretty doable. Let's see, four hours, 240 minutes. So it's 12 miles, 20 minute miles. That should be very doable. A couple little uphills, but not too bad. So, big downhill to start. Namaste, namaste. A little bit of dancing. These guys are soldiering on up. No trains, no roads. <laughs> Nothing drivable. No motorized vehicles at all. Just those guys. To give you an idea of what some of the trails look like from Namche to Lukla, it is basically yak and pony covered poop 
on stairs and rough rock and you see these dark spots here that is just the worst smelling yak pee ever oh just concentrates and oh smells terrible Whew. I was trying to hold my breath a little bit going past and then you come across these wonderful suspension bridges that just take you from one side of the river to the other and then there'll be a climb out of Lukla and they are they kind of bounce a good bit and you might encounter yak and ponies that are wide on these things so you got to time your crossings if you can it's quiet right now in the checkpoint in Manjo which means about hour 15 in I'd have to check the benchmarks to see how far along that is but I'm guessing not quite a third or maybe about a third we'll see well I've reached this heavenly place all around is beautiful but I think I'm gonna soak my feet and a girl trying to do jump rope here try and try and try and to get it going feel a little better a little fresher after this sometimes it's worth taking five ten minutes to enjoy the glacial stream and it is cold let me tell you Ooh. you forgot they're just ahead of me then I just bumped into my buddy Ricardo again <laughs> He's got his guitar. We will manage to come into Lukla together, I guess. That's right. Well, that's nice. That's now, a long stretch, man. Did you get Kalapatar or what did you do? Oh my god. Kalapatar opened up 360 degrees. Oh, nice. Unbelievable. Nice. Yeah, the views were amazing. Great. It was worth it. Oh my god, so worth it. Good. I made for a long day, but we made it. Yeah. It was worth it. So, yeah, I thought, oh, we'll get to Namche and zero power, yeah. which pretty much yeah. prohibited us from being able to connect you and I. So, I know nothing, I just eat Wi Fi, nothing. Yep, nothing. Okay. Pull over for a minute to put on my backpack cover, keep my computer dry, and my jacket because it seems like it's actually raining hard enough to worry about at the moment get things wet 50 just coming into town getting into Lukla so uh, four hours 20 minutes airline office is open so I'll see good uphill at the end finish it off right A little bit of celebration. This is the Tim's card. Checkers Information Management System. You need that, which you can get in Kathmandu or here, and the park entry permit. There you go, my good friend. Thank you. So it might be good to chat about prices on how this whole thing turned out for me. Getting here from the U.S., I didn't get a particularly inexpensive flight, but it was 1,200 round trip. And then the Lukla flight was 150 each way, so that's 1,500. And then since I've been here, I've taken out 300 in cash and probably spent another 
odd hundred bucks or something like that. So whole trip has been done in about 200. I bought some artwork and that was a bit of a, a splurge as well. And the artwork, just incredible mandala piece. So for 10 days in including flights, a little bit over $200 a day. These guest houses, when we've been staying, the deal is you stay there and they give you lunch and dinner. They expect to sell you lunch and dinner. The room itself is between free to $5 a night and then the food is about eight to $10 a meal. Oh, I got a friend following me. Hey buddy, what's up? How you doing? How are you, huh? So, I seem to be getting out of each place for about between 15 and 25 a night, depending on how nice it is. They give you a room, a non-private bathroom, and you have a uh, variety of different configurations. It's good to bring a sleeping bag. I don't think I needed the sleeping mat. I would not bring that again. So, that's the deal. This is the chaos of the Lukla airport here. Just bags from expeditions coming and going. Everybody trying to get a flight out. Nobody having a absolutely sure end of the ticket. And if you want to walk out into the runway area, yeah, go for it. from Germany. Matthias. Matthias and Maria. Maria from Idaho and her husband. Clark. Clark. And they're from Turkey. AJ. AJ. And then we got these characters here again. Not in the marathon. But these guys were in the marathon. <laughs> and, and you didn't get Ali. Oh Ali, I didn't yeah I didn't, yes. didn't see him back there. He's been hiding out behind the uh, camera. You got the nice gimbal camera yes. with a windsock which is nice. This is the cheap version here. <laughs> But they're saying in the marathon beforehand, a lot of people have altitude issues. There was a Canadian woman who had pulmonary edema, edema and died, and a Japanese woman who had the same thing. And trainers were telling her, oh, it's fine, just tough it out. That's a big It's just something that's true. Uh, with me was the, the point when I just started with the, with the full distance and I said, okay, everything is fine and I said, I can't breathe. So the first is, okay, you get Dymox. Then they get paracetamol, then they get another medicine, medicine, medicine. You can go up, you can go up, you can go up. And I was just for one day. Is that hot chocolate? Yes, that's me. <laughs> Caramel hot chocolate from Starbucks. Thank you so much. Welcome. And that's why I was, um, some sort of, uh, started this discussion with this guy. Let's hear. Ah. <laughs> it's nice to bring a few little toys around that you can share with the local children. So it was crystal clear this morning, clear as a bell. And I took a couple pictures of the mountains because I thought, oh my gosh, look at this. And then I kind of joked, hey, it might be a lightning front coming in. And then within 10 minutes, all these clouds have come in which may jeopardize our flight taking off from Kathmandu. It's mostly probably John's fault, but we don't know for sure. <laughs> oh my word. Okay, now I actually believe we might be getting on a plane. There's blue sky up and above. There's an actual plane in front of us. They're unloading Coke and Fanta and onions. <laughs> We've got a series of passengers here who are ready to go. It appears that the runway is going to... I think we're going to be okay. And Mr. Chutlu here, he is going to put us on the plane. Everybody's been standing around looking at the clouds and other planes and whatnot. We've got another one coming in here. So this is the landing, the big downhill landing. And the runway itself is maybe a tiny bit wider than the plane, but not a lot wider. And you've got to have that approach just perfect. And if you hit it right, you bleed off a lot of speed up the hill. And by the time you get to the top of the hill, 
you have to use extra power to see there's a nice landing the motor, put the brakes on, accelerate hard, make sure the accelerators peg the yellow helicopter. We got Dan and John up there, thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Take it on. Here we go. Too easy. Here Too easy. Is. Building up power. Thank you. 